Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode 174 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilays, coming to you live from YouTube and probably gaining many, many grey hairs today because the, the technical fun that I've been having with bringing these broadcasts to you today has been not in the least bit fun. But never mind, David, you get the first comment for this one. Hello again. We should get you a theme song for the background. That would be good, actually. Somebody write me a perfume theme song. Druva says, oh, hey there, David. OK, so you guys saying hello to each other. OK, at least now we know that for the next two videos, assuming I will be able to get to the second video, um, we are going to be smelling good stuff. So what have I got in store for you for this one? Please consider subscribing to my channel, by the way, if you haven't already done so. You will find details of how you can support my work on coffee in the video description below as well. This is this is a, a particular perfume that I've been meaning to bring your attention for a little while and then stuff has just been getting in the way and then today I thought, no, 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 I really need to do this now. The one in question is this guy here. Uh, it's called Violet Shot from the brand Olfactive Studio, which I'm sure many of you will be aware of, a brand founded a good few years ago now by, by Céline Verleur, probably most famous for uh, Chambre Noire, but I, my personal favourite from that brand uh, is Panorama. Um, which I talked about in a recent video with um, Max Forty. Um, this is from a sort of sub range within the brand called the Sepia Collection. And I believe in 2018, I think it was in 2018, the Sepia Collection started with three scents composed by uh, Bertrand Duchaufour. And those three were, so they're, they're all something shot, um, which maybe isn't the best name for a perfume, but never mind. So there was a sheep shot, a van vanilla shot and a leather shot. And then in 2019, uh, Dominique Ropion composed three more and they were the, the, the floral ones. So there was a rose shot, iris shot and violet shot. They're all interesting, all well, well worth trying. I didn't actually really get a chance to try them uh, until last year. And I came really, really close to putting um, violet shot on my list of the best perfumes that I encountered last year because I was so taken with this and e even now sometimes when I kind of go through my blog and I see the list I think oh maybe I should have included this one but I could only choose 10. Um, so th this is this is this video is an excuse for me to really say to you if you can get samples of these check them out they're all interesting in their own right but my favorite from the range is without a doubt uh, violet shot so let's just spray it and talk for a few minutes about why I like this one so much um, by the way as these have been around for a little while chances are that some of you have smelt them so please do let me know if you uh, ha if you've tried them what you think of them Daniel says hello from Andover in the UK not very far from me really you're just kind of a bit north from me uh, but we're in the same county. Uh, first time on a live stream. Love your videos, says Daniel. That's very, very kind. Thank you. Nick says, hope it's not an overtly candied violet. No, no. And this is this is why I like it. Um, Hi there. Sorry I'm late as I know you were on, says Angela. No, you're fine. You mostly just miss technical issues, Angela. So honestly, you're all right. Are these retail bottles look conveniently small, says Ashfaq? No, this is the travel size. So sorry, yes, they are retail, uh, but they're the travel size. They're 15 mils. And these are all extra de parfum. Um, so let's smell. This this is this is really good. This is really good. And this is uh, this is Dominique Ropion doing what he does best, by which I mean that he takes things, he, really really grand symphonic materials and symphonic ideas, and and he balances them so impeccably, and and he makes them sound sound symphony symphony analogy he makes them smell and come across as both really really intimate and detailed and grand so you're you're, you're getting the overall effect and it and it's like the volume knob on the music has been turned to full but through a really really good sound system so that you can still hear all the nuances um there's very, very few perfumers who can who can do that like Ropion can. I suppose the, the kind of crowning achievement of that style is something like Portrait of a Lady, which just manages to be like and at the same time. That last moment probably will not be so good who just for people who 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 take these videos as audio only. Um and this is a leathery violet. Now that's been done before as well. Uh Michel Alperac did it really well for 
the the is it is it the leather for Armani Privé? I forget exactly what it was called. Uh, and uh, the the original Bottega Veneta scent also did that violent violet leather thing. Not violent at all. Um, so it's. But it is very definitely the flower as well. So those ironone, those sweet-ish ironone notes are in there. But their sweetness has been brought right down. Queer amethyst, thank you very much, Lalwa. Well done. Um, and so it's been toned right down and brought, aligned with this really, really sophisticated, beautiful, beautiful shade of beige suede leather. But it's also, it's also peppery. It, it's also incensey. Um, and now Persolase is sitting here thinking, why didn't I put this on the list of the best from 2020? It's, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful work. Ashwak is saying, are you getting those flinty violet facets that we tend to get in some Oris resonoid butter? Yeah, flinty is a good word, actually. Maybe that's what I was missing when I was thinking about it. There is... There is almost something of sort of powdery, flinty, as in not powdery, sweet talcum powdery, but if you took something like flintiness and pulverised it, powdered it. Um, sounds gorgeous, says Angela. Is it is it like a Messia violet, says David, the Chanel Messia? No, because that one, that one is sweeter and that one is more retro, isn't it? Whereas this feels much more contemporary somehow. Um, is... Woozy says is is Fahrenheit violet and leather, yes, but it's 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 much more violet leaf, right? Which which is greener and takes things in a different direction. Uh, I miss violet is another good leather violet. Oh, I I don't know that one. I miss violet. Okay, does it have Middle Eastern vibe? Says Miss Marie. What makes you ask that? Not especially, not especially. Um, but this is like. It reminds me a little bit of a scent from a brand that. I mentioned not that long ago, but we don't talk about a lot here. Insolence by Garlat. No, no, no. Insolence is is insolence is cheekier. I think it's more insolent. Uh, we talked recently about Arquiste, and some of you may remember the um, perfume Alexandre from Arquiste. I forget whether that one was just composed by Jan Vanier or whether it was Jan and um, Rodrigo Flores Rue, but that had. A, a kind of crunchy, crispy quality to its leather note as well. And it really felt like leather in winter. And that's got this feel. Um, so maybe there's an injection of something like juniper berry at the top because it's it's got that woody crispness, woody crunchiness. Um, is it my idea or are there more and more brands that embrace the idea of the 10 mil travel format says Nick? No, no, I think there are definitely more things like that going around. I think it's been seen as quite successful by some brands. Um, but there's also something else that I can't quite put my finger on. Some kind of a sweetish, ambery inflection, but never, never overly, um, overly sugared. And, and I think ultimately that's why I fell in love with it, because I wore it lots of times. It kept presenting new facets. Um, it, it it kept surprising me. I just wish they'd come up with different names because something shot. Just I think I think it's a very reductive sort of name, because the idea of a shot makes you think of a perfume that maybe will be quite straightforward and quite easy to understand and quite linear and actually will not present as many interesting facets as these ones do. What was also interesting for me was that I thought I would love the rose. It's a Dominique Ropion rose, whereas I actually thought the rose was good without being great. Um, the iris is interesting as well. And from the other ones, I think the from the Duchaufour ones, I would I would um, recommend trying the um, the leather. Let's take a final comment from Ashwag. Any similarity with Jacques Fass's new Iris Gris, the new and expensive one? No, I mean that one is a really, really heartbreakingly stupendous iris. No, it's 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 not like that. Um, a shot like an alcoholic blast, says Drew. But yeah, well, I think of a shot in that sense as well, which I think is a shame. It's the wrong, it's the wrong association with this. I found the name kind of mediocre, says Miss Marie. Yeah, it, it's not the best name, but never mind. You can you can forgive it a lot when when you smell this. So highly highly recommended. 
do check these out if you can. Um, and if you have made it through these technically interesting broadcasts, please stick around for the final one where we will mark the 11th anniversary of the setting up of Persilaze.com. The anniversary was yesterday, so um, see you in a bit.